We tend to eat mainly with, first of all, our eyes, if something looks good, but mainly with our emotions. We frequently get our emotions very much connected to certain foods. So when we look at food, we're not really looking at just food, but we are looking at a lot of emotional stuff from our past. So let me give you an example to make this really easy enough to understand. So I used to have a very strong chocolate craving. And for me, it was binge eating chocolate and not being able to live without it. It became like a drug for me. I needed to have it for my fix. So not only was I physically, um, physically addicted to it, there was also a lot of emotional stuff going on as well. So what had happened for me was when I was about five years old, I had some chocolate given to me by my father after having a difficult uh, situation of having to go to the hospital and having some stitches, he gave me this chocolate as a reward for going through a difficult experience. And also in my five-year-old mind, it was like my father's given me attention, something that I'd really crave. What child doesn't crave um, a full attention from their parents? And this felt like the first time I really got some love and direct attention just one-on-one -on -one from him. So in my five-year-old brain, it connected chocolate with first of all having a reward for doing something difficult and then also from getting love from my father. So over the years, whenever I went through a difficult circumstance situation and I needed to reward myself and I did it with chocolate. And whenever I wanted love and attention, it was chocolate was giving me that love and attention. So when you think of food, if that food in some way on the subconscious level is giving you one of the most primal needs we have as human beings, love and attention, how can we possibly refuse that kind of promise and reward? It's very difficult. The only way to deal with this is to go and separate out the love and attention that we got from some person or whatever the emotion was from that food and get what it is we needed from back when we were younger, give it to ourselves so that we can disconnect the two and we can see the food as just being food. When we do that, then we can taste the chocolate or the Pepsi or the potato chips or bread for what exactly it is. And frequently what will happen is the taste of that chocolate or the taste of that Pepsi, all the chemicals that are usually in a lot of these processed foods or these developed foods, we can taste them then and it doesn't taste that great. So if you have some sort of craving or food addiction that you really like, you don't want to give it up because it's giving you something most basic and your subconscious will fight to maintain that in its life. What I want you to know though is that all we end up doing is taking away the emotional part of it so we can enjoy that food as food. So even though I'll, I still eat chocolate now, I enjoy it, but it doesn't give me that, that sense of um, having to have it, not getting enough of it. And once I start eating, I can't stop it. Now I can have a little bit, enjoy it, and take it or leave it if that is the situation. So I hope this has been helpful. If you have enjoyed this, I want to know more about my approach and helping people unravel all the emotional connections with food so you have more control, so that you are at peace with food. Take a look at my website. Go to resetmyweight.com and there's plenty of resources there, information to help support you. And don't forget, if you've enjoyed this video, click the like button and subscribe.